This one's gonna be rough. So, we have finally got the details on the Kawasaki Ninja 7 Hybrid. This is a project I've been following for a while. And now we've finally got some ride reviews and the specifications on this machine. And not gonna lie, it seems a little underwhelming. Now I'm gonna say this right here at the top of this video before anybody gets mad at me for lambasting this particular motorcycle because I am gonna be a little bit critical here. This is a very cool piece of tech. It's also making the way for an entirely new genre of motorcycles. This is the world's first full hybrid motorcycle. We did have a three-wheeled scooter that was a hybrid, so I'm not really gonna count that, even though it kinda does, scooters or bikes, whatever. But this is the first time we are seeing it wrapped up in an actual motorcycle. This is going to open Pandora's box for all kinds of really cool projects, and we're gonna see future development on this. Somebody else is gonna jump into the hybrid game and somebody's gonna push the boundaries even harder than Kawasaki is right now. So that's my little caveat there. And with that being said, let's talk about some of the details on this motorcycle because it's both very cool and a bit of a bummer in some ways. So this bike is powered by two independent, one, well, one motor and one engine. They're I'm going to use those terms interchangeably throughout the video. I know they're not. Just get on board. So the engine, 451 cc's. It's a little parallel twin that was developed in conjunction with the Eliminator 450. In this configuration, this motor is putting down 58 horsepower and 32 foot-pounds of torque, which is pretty darn good for a little 450. Got me really excited, actually, to ride the Eliminator if I can ever get my hands on one. But the real magic trick with this hybrid is the fact that it can boost itself up to 69 horsepower, nice, and 45 foot-pounds of torque. But it only lasts for 15 <laughs> seconds. That's a big bummer because who's only gonna want the max power of their bike for 15 seconds? Kawasaki claims that that's for passing, but you don't really need an extra 10 horsepower to pass more effectively. I, I fail to see the point of this boost mode, given that it's only 15 seconds and it's like a video game. You push the button, bike go faster, then it runs out of meter and you have to let it cool down after like 60 seconds or whatever, it's back up and then you can use it again like it's your ultimate ability in a video game. The reason why it only lasts for 15 seconds is because the battery and the motor need to cool down, literally, they need to cool down after being used because it's a massive drain on the system. And Kawasaki spared no expense designing this whole motor and engine symbiosis because there's ducting that goes through the actual motorcycle around the motor and into the back where the battery is to cool it down. It's pretty futuristic and it actually reminds me a lot of the snorkel on the H2. Uh, there's that giant duct for the supercharger that's on the left side of the ZH2, but it definitely adds a little bit of bulk to this bike because it's 500 pounds. <laughs> it's a 500 pound 450. That makes sense. Battery's a big 48 volt chunk the motor itself is not gonna be light and it's the Kawasaki steel trellis frame. However, while they didn't spare any expense on the drivetrain, they spared every expense on everything else. <laughs> it looks really cool, but we've got right side up forks, we've got bargain bin brakes, and from the reports that I've read from multiple different outlets, they use some heavy duty industry terms to describe this handling. Stuff like, it will get the job done or it will suit most riders. That right there is industry slang for this motorcycle does not handle well. Part of the reason why it isn't going to handle well is because they added another six inches to the wheelbase. So if you're looking at the photos and you're like, why does this bike look so long? 
It's because it's six inches longer than the average Ninja. They're not saying it was needed to accommodate the motor and the battery and all of that stuff. They claim that it was actually elongated to help manage the torque, which I'm gonna call bullshit on. Now the real question mark in all of this is price. This is definitely an expensive thing to develop and I anticipate Kawasaki expecting this to be a loss leader. I think that they're looking at this as, look at what we can do, look at what we can develop and they're not gonna try to make their money back. Now I'm not gonna say that this bike is going to be priced aggressively. I think we're looking at something around 12,000 bucks. At the very least, I'm expecting this to be an expensive early adopter piece of technology and it's gonna have a price tag to reflect that. However, I don't think Kawasaki's looking at this being like, yes, this bike is going to take over the world. I just don't see it. Before we hit the road for a little editorializing on the future success or failure of the Ninja 7 Hybrid, I need to take a second and shout out the sponsor for today's video, Insta360. If you want to capture your rides or you just want to take some really cool photos, their X3 camera is just what you need. It's a 360 degree camera that allows you to get some super unique angles on a motorcycle and thanks to their stitching software, it makes the mounts disappear. I've been filming with this camera for the better part of a year now and one of the most important things for me is reliability and ease of use. If the camera cuts out on me in the middle of filming, then it goes right in the bin, but this thing has been as reliable as my KLR650. It's also easy to edit either in video editing suites like Premiere Pro or in the app so you can upload to Instagram or YouTube. If you want to check out the X3 for yourself, click that link down in the description below and get a free selfie stick with your order. Now let's get out there and have a chat on where Kawasaki may have made some mistakes with this hybrid motorcycle. I figured since we're talking about a Kawasaki, it makes sense to ride a Kawasaki. It's also been a hot minute since the KLR has been on the channel. I bet you a lot of people forgot that I had this motorcycle. Uh, honestly, I think the last time I rode this was up in Sturgis in like July or August or whenever that was going down. You may also notice that I do not have my usual chin action going on, and that is because I'm reviewing this lovely helmet from 509. This is the Commander 5, the Mach 5 Commander, sorry. And uh, I'm test driving it. It's really hard for me to put a chin mount on here because of the nature of this peak. So you're dealing with over-the-shoulder cam and dashboard cam. Let me know if you like this setup because I'm going to try playing around with different placements of the 360 just so we can get some cooler shots so while the bike itself might be a little bit underwhelming despite how cool all of the technology is and you know i'm expecting more iterations of this motorcycle to be more uh, more exciting to ride you'll get to use that boost for longer this is the first iteration i'm not expecting it to stay like this forever but this is the bike we have, so we have to talk about it like this. If ifs and buts were candies and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Now there's a couple of things that Kawasaki's doing with this motorcycle that are a little silly, I think. So first and foremost, let's talk about that shot from Revzilla's Instagram that shows Jen dusting up on a leader bike on the little humble hybrid. So that's actually pretty sweet. The fact that this bike can stomp a leader bike off the line and still get 250cc motorcycle level gas consumption, that's, that's pretty sweet. However, most electric bikes are going to do that. In fact, I would hazard to guess that maybe through the first 100 feet, the KLR can outrun a leader bike just because of the way the torque spread works. You know, leader bikes are hard to launch. This thing isn't, and neither is just about any other electric bike. That's one of the biggest advantages you see for electric bikes, and it's why Stefano Mesa is just absolutely whooping up on everybody around the first corner, uh, first, second, third corners in Moto America because he doesn't have to, like, the launch on the Energica is so good nobody can stop him nobody can stop Stefano Mesa off the line 
Now, obviously, I'm not sitting here being like, I'm Stefano Mesa, I can do this. No, it still takes some skill to launch one of these bikes. But in terms of real world performance, just about any electric motorcycle is going to beat a leader bike off the line. That, that does not impress me. Now, I also understand why they're doing this. This is a hybrid, so talking about the fuel economy makes sense, but all motorcycles get great fuel economy, man. I The worst motorcycle's fuel economy I've ever ridden was the Turbo Hayabusa. The Turbo Busa was getting horrendous gas mileage, but it was still getting more gas mileage than my Mazda was. So any bike is going to get great gas mileage. I guarantee you that nobody cares. Nobody really cares. Nobody who's going to buy this motorcycle specifically is going to care. You can argue all day about the impacts of motorcycles and green technology on climate change, but the reality is if anybody was going to drive a car and they got on a motorcycle, they would be consuming less gasoline because motorcycles are just more efficient machines. They, they just are. So by being like, yeah, this thing has 70 miles to the gallon. Okay. Neat. I don't care. Good gas mileage should be a byproduct of making a cool motorcycle. It shouldn't be this uh it shouldn't be the sole goal i'll say that because imagine this again we're getting into complete hypotheticals and like i said earlier if it's in butts were candies and nuts we'd all have a merry christmas but i'm gonna pitch this to you let's say that they took this 450 cc motor and uh they've got it making 58 horsepower what if the electric motor could work for longer? What if it could create more power for sport mode? What if it allowed you to power out of corners more effectively? And what if it was a razor sharp handling motorcycle? Then I could see the weekend rider being like, yeah, that actually sounds really cool. I can go for long rides because the gas mileage is long, but I'm going to be able to go hit all of my awesome twisty roads because the bike handles great. I also really love the idea of a hybrid that you can just turn the motor off and just run electricity for in the city, but the city range on the battery is really, really lacking. It doesn't, it doesn't go very far, and the speed is very limited. So it feels to me like they should have either gone with a more potent battery that allows you to switch between gas and electric for long stretches of time, or they should have made some performance hybrid to be like, look at what hybrid technology can do for motorcycles. This performance hybrid is only capable of doing these things because it's the conjunction of gas and electric. Right now, it just feels like who's the target audience for this motorcycle? Because anybody who's looking for a really nice commuter, they're just gonna get an NC700X. You know, you can get those for like three grand. And you got a front, and you got a parallel twin that just sips fuel. I was really hoping that we would get more performance out of this bike. And I, I think that that would also help justify its inevitable high price tag. And we've seen some of the crazy stuff that performance hybrids can do in cars. I mean, electric cars are fast as all get out now you know the tesla roadster and the lightning and all that stuff uh they're awesome and you have more room in cars to make that happen but i don't know was i just hoping for too much out of this motorcycle maybe that was the case maybe i was just hopelessly optimistic as i usually am and with that being said, let me know all your thoughts on this bike down below. Let me know what you think about hybrid technology coming to motorcycles. Is it something that motorcycles need? Is it a waste of time? Do you like these camera angles? What did you have for breakfast this morning? Let me know all of that down in the description below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.